All right, so as you all know, I like using SST to deploy my Next.js applications. I have this icon generator AI deployed with SST. I have this YouTube chapters generator application deployed with SST, and I deploy this hackathon website using SST. So I kind of wanted to talk about the pros and cons of using SST over Vercel when you are deploying your Next.js application. Now, the first thing I want to point out is Next.js is built by Vercel, right? It's an open source project. It's maintained by a company called Vercel. And Vercel also makes hosting that's basically geared towards deploying Next.js applications. So the first thing I want to say is that if you're using Vercel, often you're going to get first class support for any features that Next adds. So that's kind of different from OpenNext, which is an open source solution that's maintained by a select few very smart individuals who basically try to hack at Next.js to get it deployed to AWS, okay? Now, there is more risk involved with using OpenNext. It's maintained by a smaller community. And although I think SSD has funding, like they are a uh, Y Combinator funded project, still, if you were to compare the funding between SSD versus Vercel, I think I would put my money on Vercel to have better support for features when deploying their stuff. I've, I've seen multiple times in the past where open source projects will get hyped up They'll get big, and then after about a year, they're no longer maintained, and you have to figure out a better way to deploy your applications. So that's one pro I'd give using Vercel over OpenNext is that Vercel obviously has a ton of money, ton of funding, ton of maintainers that work directly with React and Next and can get all those new features deployed to their hosting solution. So let's go down to the streaming page of this docs, and let's read this. It says, streaming support is extremely experimental, right? So streaming, from what I understand, is when you have a next component, like a React server component, and you wrap another server component with a suspense boundary, that suspended component is gonna get streamed in. So if when using open next for your deployment, if streaming is extremely experimental, that's potentially a feature that you're not gonna have access to, right? So that's gonna degrade the potential performance of your app, although it's not a big issue. I mean, my apps still run pretty good. All right, let's move on to the FAQ. Will my Next.js app behave the same as it does in Vercel? So the main line I want to point out here is one architectural difference is how middleware runs, but this should not affect the behavior of most apps. All right, so let's read this line. Basically, it's saying that on Vercel, your middleware code is deployed to Edge. So it exists all over the globe. It runs really fast for users, but there's a limitation with the Edge compute. You cannot run a lot of node libraries. Second thing they point out is that in Vercel, your server code, like your API endpoints, your React server component pages, those are deployed to a single region. So if you were deployed to Vercel, you typically choose a region like US East 1. Um, and so all requests will first hit that region. Stuff will get cached on the CDN. Stuff, if you have middleware, will get cached on the edge. But here's the thing I also want to point out about differences. When a user makes a request, the middleware code runs first. Then the request reaches the CDN. If the request is cached, the cache response is returned. Otherwise, the request hits the server function. This means that the middleware is called even for cached request. So this means if you were to do authorization or authentication in your middleware function, and for whatever reason you go into your database and you revoke a user's access or revoke a token, they will get revoked at the middleware level because this runs before every cached response. Okay, so this is oversell. Now, how does that compare to open next? Well, when you use open next, it generates a server function which includes the middleware code. So now your middleware doesn't run on an edge across like the entire globe, like it does in Vercel. It's actually gonna run just before your server API code is invoked. It's gonna run before your React server component is invoked. And that's gonna run probably on the single region that you deployed your application to. So that's a huge loss in terms of performance, in my opinion. But this also means that for cached requests, the CDN will send back the cache response and the middleware code will not run. So that's a huge difference. In one scenario on Vercel, your middleware runs before every single request, even if it's cached. On Open Next, your middleware will not run on cached responses. So for the most part, you may not see issues with this, but, but caching is sometimes problematic. And if you have something in your middleware that you'd never want cached, you might run into issues with this. Just keep that in mind. Secondly, due to this line, the middleware is actually gonna run on a node runtime. So you have access to do like whatever type of database calls with like Prisma inside your middleware, I believe. You can do normal node API requests. So those are the main difference. They kind of explain why they made those um, 
technical changes for AWS. Um, so I would say make sure you read through the docs before you just blindly start using Open Next. Again, for my three applications I showed, I don't have issues with this. I'm not trying to like fine tune performance. I don't need to squeeze out another like 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds for my request times. I'm fine with uh, how stuff works. So let's talk about the pros of using SST to deploy your Next.js application. At work, I use AWS for everything. Um, our entire application is built and deployed to AWS. We use like Lambdas, we use API gateways, DynamoDB, et cetera. And I like being in this ecosystem. I will say learning AWS is very challenging. It's very overwhelming for a lot of people. I mean, they have like hundreds of services here. So how it kind of works is when you run SST, that is invoking something called AWS CDK. CDK is a library that's provided by AWS to allow you to write infrastructure as code. So all of the infrastructure that you need to spin up, you define in TypeScript, and that is going to basically invoke CloudFormation to spin up a stack. And inside of the stack, you can see that you have all these different resources that are created when you do your SST deploy. You got a lot of stuff with a lot of different services. You have Lambdas, IAM, SQS, and it does take some time to understand what all these little individual services do. And then to get a higher level picture of how all this works, it's gonna be very challenging for you, but ultimately you don't have to come in here and look at this stuff. This is more if you wanna like fine tune various deployment options. Okay, so that's that's one pro. I guess you can also call it a con. Um, I, I like this, I like this type of stuff. Getting getting into the AWS console when needed, um, pretty cool. All right, the second thing I like about SST is you have more control. You have more configuration options. For example, when I deployed my application, I wanted to make sure that my logs lasted for 30 days, okay? So all I had to do is when declaring my stack, I just had to come in here and say, hey, you know what? Let's just make the log retention be a month for all my logs in case I wanted to go in and kind of look at some analytics about what endpoints are being hit, how much traffic I'm getting, etc. You also have the ability to change caching policies. When I was deploying to AWS Amplify, there was no way to override how your server actions and your routes are cached. With SST, you basically just define a new cache policy. Header caching, you could turn off header caching, cookie caching, query string caching, etc. You can change the time to live for all these. So you have like this fine grain configuration that it's really good. I, like this is really good because sometimes when you're using a pre-made framework or deployment option, you want to tweak something, but you can't because you don't have access to the knobs under the hood to really make your application do what you want. So another great thing about SST is I have control over the timeouts of my Lambda functions and also the memory size. So if you use Vercel and you're on the, the hobby plan, I think your Lambda functions can run up to 10 seconds max and then they'll time out. With SST, you can bump this up to 900 seconds if you want to and you won't have any issues. You can also throw a bunch more memory at it if you decide that you want to do some heavy computations on your API endpoints, that's an option. So another benefit of using SST, again, this is just using CDK. So if there's more AWS resources that you want to set up when you're deploying your application, you could easily do that. So for example, with my YouTube chapters generator, when you try to generate um, your chapters for a YouTube video, I actually send off a event to a queue and I process that chapter in its own isolated Lambda. So because I'm using SST and CDK under the hood, I literally just say, create me a queue. And then when I get messages on that queue, I need to run this function. I can configure you know, the function timeouts, I can configure environment variables, I can set up a dead letter queue so that if for whatever reason, someone can't generate their YouTube video, I could have that retry you know, up to three times, 10 times, et cetera. And then finally, if it just doesn't work, it gets sent to another queue. So I had this ability to kind of opt into all these different really powerful AWS services like SQS, SNS, SES, if I want to send out emails. And all of that is configured right here in my application inside of my TypeScript code. Versus if you use like Vercel, you'll notice that when you start wanting to get like messaging, they'll recommend you a third-party service. They're going to say, oh, you should just sign up for this third-party service if you wanted to do some type of, you know, message broker type of thing. Or if you want more powerful logging, go ahead and sign up for this third-party service. Instead, everything that you need Typically, AWS has everything you need. I know the UI with AWS kind of is, I don't want to say sucks, but it's just not as friendly as Vercel. Um, but again, once you learn it, you get used to it, you deal with it. Let's move on to talking about more of the pros of Vercel. Vercel is more, you know, a fully baked deployment solution. 
There's not much work you have to do. You basically just point it to your Git repo and it's going to check for changes. And when those changes happens, it's gonna go ahead and deploy your application to their hosting service. I will say that the speed of which this stuff deploys is unmatched. SST can be a little bit slow. Um, AWS is just slow in general. Whatever caching mechanisms that they're doing behind the scenes with like Turbo Repo or their, their build pipeline, Stuff is fast. I've seen deploys happen extremely fast, and I've heard that if you actually use Bun for deploying like your next app or for, for running it, you can get deployments happening within like a couple of seconds, right? And this is all like fully baked into Vercel. Vercel also has the ability to do like URL previews, which is pretty nice. So like when you make a pull request or you're doing like an open source project and other people in your community want to add a feature, Vercel has this ability to do a preview URL where it takes the code, it deploys it to like a preview state, and you can click on that URL and view what you know your community has worked on. You can go test it out. And then finally you merge it and it's going to deploy it to production. Um, secondly, I really like this UI. It's clean, it's intuitive, it's very fresh. Um, I like using Vercel. I think the, the user experience is great. Um, compared to, as you can tell, look at AWS. I mean, it's just a hot mess of various random services that are kind of disjointed and you got to kind of like Half of these filters don't work the same way with all their services. Like sometimes you have to start with typing in the correct starting characters of your word. Other other times it can actually like do a fuzzy search. So it's it's a lot of inconsistencies with the AWS dashboard. I'm sure people in the comments could complain all day about AWS. So that's a good benefit. Deployments are super fast. You don't have to worry about doing that yourself. When it comes to SST, you don't have a built-in way to automatically deploy your SST next application. Your options, if I were to look at my icon generator, your options for deploying your application is you have to maintain your own pipeline process. So in our case, I'm using GitHub workflows um, to basically deploy, I guess you can call them GitHub actions, to deploy my SST project. I have to set up all these environment variables. I have to like write my own code to you know spin up Node, install my Node dependencies, and then I run an SSD deployment with a particular stage. Now again, this is one file, then it take too long to run. But if you're not familiar with how to set up a CI CD pipeline and get deployments working, and then you have to go into GitHub Actions, you have to set up environment variables there. It's just more stuff to learn. But again, that gives you more flexibility. If you want to tweak how something works, you have GitHub Actions, which are like a lower level construct for running stuff in a CI CD pipeline. So if that's the thing that you want, if you like that configuration ability, again, SST is going to give that. All right, now let's talk about pricing. I'm sure that's something everyone wants to hear about. So with Vercel, you can do a pro plan for $20 a month. Honestly, if you live in the US, this is dirt cheap. $20 a month is not that much, but where they get you is probably your bandwidth. So if you actually have a successful application that's getting a lot of requests, um, that's where you're going to get charged. You're going to get charged for your compute and your bandwidth. Um, so go read the fine print if you want to compare like real numbers about like how much will Vercel cost versus using SS. So the way AWS works is they're going to bill you based on usage. And they also give you a bunch of free tier um, credits. So if we were to look at my current AWS account and kind of look at the pricing breakdown, you'll see that the most expensive thing that I'm using on AWS is storing all of the icons from my icon generator AI application. Basically, when someone generates icons, I store them in an S3 bucket. And I think I have like over 100 gigabytes worth of icons stored there. So that is the main cost. You can see in October, it's about $3, which is not that much. Um, Route 53, again, I think I'm charged like 50 cents a month or something for having a zone set up. Now the zone is for something else. The zone is for another application. So that is even uh, baked into my icon generator. So if you do look at this list, you'll notice that Lambda is not even here. I'm using a lot of services like SQS for my own custom solution. So if you're using SST just to deploy a Next.js application, I'm assuming these won't even show up. ECR will not show up on your, your list. And if you have no files stored in S3 bucket, this will also not show up in your list. So the most you're going to be charged is for your Route 53 zone if you decide to go down that path. Um, depending on how you set up your domains or you do subdomains, etc. So if you were to look at the, the cost of running my icon generator, it's about five or six dollars a month, um, plus some other applications that I have running on this, which don't get much traffic. They might ask, well, how much traffic do I actually get for my deployed um, icon generator application? If you look at here, I don't get too many users a month. I mean, this is 4.9 uh, thousand in the last 28 days. So that's not too much traffic. If I were to go here and try to see how many people are generating icons within the past 30 days, let's just run this real quick. 
Right, let's just see in the past 30 days if I have access to this. Let's do days. We'll do 30 days. How many people have generated icons in my application the past 30 days? So you can see here, we're getting like, you know, 200 in one day, 88 one day. So I'm getting some decent traffic. This isn't like a ton of traffic, um, but I am getting traffic. So with all this traffic that I'm getting, again, and my total cost is like $6, and half that is coming from S3 bucket for storing these icons. Using SST and AWS is a great way to basically deploy your application and not have to pay much upfront for your application. The last thing I'll point out is that if you are using the hobby plan, I do believe at some point I read through the license and they say that if you make money off of the hobby plan, you have to upgrade to a pro plan. So that's again, one downside of Vercel. You might use it. You might think that everything's fine, but ultimately you need to be upgrading if you're going to make money off of your deployed applications. All right, that's all I got. So if you have your own opinions about Vercel or SST, leave a comment below. We can have a discussion about that. And uh, like always, I have a Discord channel that you're welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out and talk to other developers, have a good day and happy coding.